call to order the November 16, 2015 <coughs> meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. Uh, first on our agenda this evening is a public hearing environmental design review hearing for 1398 Mass Ave. Doctors Express is here with a special permit amendment. Uh, if they are here, I would ask the proponents all to come to a seat at the table, please. And if you could introduce yourself, certainly. My name is Dick Keshen. I'm an attorney that used to be in Arlington, uh, now in Lexington. Sorry. Uh, I represent uh, uh, Doctors Express, which has a name change. Uh, which requires a little bit of a modification on our sign request. But basically, uh, to my left is uh, Sharuk Jalusi, uh, who is a physician and uh, who will be the medical director of the facility, and Mushmi Saleja, who is the uh, my, uh, manager of the LLP that will uh, oversee the operation. Can I have the spelling of the names for the minutes? Do you have a card? I have a card. That'd be fine. And, sorry. and I'll spell my name. Why don't you write it on there? Oh, sure. And then we'll be good. May I do one better? I do have the curriculum vitae of uh, Dr. Jalassi that might be helpful to uh, the board. And do you have one? Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, we are here to ask for a modification of an existing permit uh, for 1398 uh, Mass <coughs> Avenue in Arlington Heights. And I just want to briefly um, uh, set the stage for the location. Uh, for in 1997, uh, Beerbrier Associates purchased uh, land that was owned by the MBTA that was for um, uh, many, many years a uh, uh, parking lot for the MBTA. Uh, and he later acquired uh, the Maron Printing uh, uh, building next door to it. Uh, and that was uh, operating as a Taylor rental at the time. Uh, the net result was uh, his ability to combine those two acquisitions into uh, what was then portrayed as a gateway into Arlington from Arlington Heights. Um, I think the board then, uh, in 1997 and then 2006, uh, looked upon uh, uh, with great favor the uh, proposal which resulted in the two buildings and the parking in the rear uh, that is there now. Um, in 2013, uh, the board may recall that uh, it granted an amendment uh, to uh, that, that existing permit and permits uh, in order to allow Bagelville uh, to operate where um, the proposal uh, that's before you tonight is located, as well as to approve a very similar operation for CareWell Urgent Care Services, uh, which was um, to be located where the Sherman Williams uh, operation is today. Uh, that was as a matter of right um, because it was less than 3,000 square feet. Uh, this <coughs> proposal is uh, 4,036 square feet, consequently because it's over 3,000 square feet, uh, requires a, a formal hearing for the amendment. The proposal for the amendment um, is such that um, uh, we are requesting... At least we have <laughs> just speak up, I guess. <laughs> Don't speak too soon either. It'll just be noise. Right. Uh, and in any event, uh, the uh, proposal for Carewell, I should say, required an amendment <coughs> because uh, uh, we needed to move 
uh, handicapped spaces to a location close to where the care well operation was to be. Um, we're asking that that amendment be amended so that we can move those two handicapped spaces to a position where the um, uh, new location for um, uh, the urgent care facility will be. So we're looking for that amendment, plus we're looking for your approval of a special permit because we're going to be uh, in excess of um, uh, 3,000 square feet. Um, I'd be happy to answer and respond to any questions the board might have and uh, uh, try to provide any information that might help you reach a uh, decision for our uh, clients. Sure. Can you have any questions? Yeah, I do have two questions. Um, I went over your plans here over the weekend, and I'm, I have a question of where are you guys planning to locate your trash uh, in here? Is it going to be stored externally or internally within the building? Good question. I'm not sure I have the answer. I can handle the exterior. Tom Godfrey, I work with Airborne Development. How you um, Good. Uh, currently. Godfrey. Godfrey, G-O-D-F-R-E-Y, -E -E with Bear Barney Development. Um, if we look at this plan here, yep. which shows the overall site for oh, both buildings, we have a common uh, dumpster enclosure, which is screened here. You'll see with an eight-foot chain link fence, uh, which is used by all the tenants uh, for common exterior uh, trash. Yeah, buildings. and I understand that is probably use that for your, um, your paper waste and stuff like that, but what about your medical waste? Yes, yeah, so for hazardous waste, yes. we will uh, utilize the services of Sterry Cycle, mm -hmm. which does that for us at our washdown location as well. We have three, uh, now that we've grown as an um, entity and we see much higher patient volume, we're doing about two pickups a week. Okay, but where do you plan to store? Oh, it will be within the, there is an existing space. Uh, do you have the plan? Yes, I have. I'm sorry. It's in a red, red bag area. That's a designated area for, for the right type for yeah. medical waste, and that is then it's handled internally and then it's handled for exactly. disposal. This is a requirement by the Department of Public. I just did not see it on the plan as far as what that is. And then um, that answers that question. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my other question is yes, I understand you, uh, you're wishing to relocate the handicap accessible parking closer to your entry. Do you guys have a drop off or a pickup? Um, uh, um, that's any parking area in, in the site plan there for, for yourselves. And let me clarify what I mean by that, okay? Uh, most people, if they're sick, they're not going to drive themselves. They're going to be driven there. So, you know, I don't think, um, you know, we all know where your building is. There's no on street parking in front of your door there. I don't want people to be double parking out in front of Mass Ave, drop people off. That's going you know, to cause a traffic nuisance. Is there a designated space somewhere in the parking lot where you can have a quick drop off or you can just drop them off and they, they, they come in from the back? Or, I mean, what's your preferred entrance? That is something that we've requested our landlord to approve two minimum two designated spots for patient drop off for exactly the reason. And do we have an answer on that? And, and we don't. We need to wait for further approval. Uh, and figure out where those spaces will be designated and um, in a, any signage or anything like that we'll, we'll need to investigate further. So there's nothing in place right now where it's just a discussion. Okay. And then follow up on that question there. Let's say um, something turns into an urgent and you require an ambulance pickup. For some, you know, you don't handle that, for that kind of facilities here. That was done in the rear or the front of the building? It would essentially be wherever 
the 911 folks want to bring their equipment. They usually arrive with uh, one ambulance and one engine company. And uh, as I was mentioning earlier to uh, uh, my side of the table, um, the Sunrise experience and the ones on Mill Street, the housing on Mill Street and at Winslow Towers, in all of those situations, equipment arrives and they park where they want to park, uh, depending upon the circumstances of the uh, 911 call, wherever they're going to park, they're going to park. Even if we designated a location, they're still going to park at the most expeditious and convenient place for them. Uh, and the Sunrise experience is uh, which is right across the street from uh, the development here, is that the ambulance pulls up to the door and the engine company stops on the avenue. And that's almost the same experience on Mill Street where the um, uh, low-cost housing is and also at Winslow Towers. I see a point where a fire truck is going to park out on the street. Yes, and that's clearly seen. They have the lights on, the strobes on. But what about those, um, for instances, where let's say you have an ambulance pickup. You're calling up for an ambulance transfer from your place to a hospital. That's not a, let's say it's not a 911 call. Well, we, we don't have that. We, it's don't only 911. Yeah. Only 911. Yeah. It's only 911. So even Watertown, we, we do about one a month kind of thing. But okay. if uh, if you call 911 from your home, they cannot drop you off at urgent care facility. They got to take you to ER. No, Same no, thing with us. Yeah, I realize that. But, yeah. but let's say someone is ill and comes to urgent care, exactly. and then develops into a let's, we can't handle this person here. Yeah, that's a 911 straight call. EMT, ACLS have to show up with the engine, and then okay. they go. Um, we otherwise, you know, everything should be right. handled over that. May I just amplify on that? I, I should mention. Uh, that the petitioners here also own the facility on Arsenal Road in Watertown, mm -hmm. Arsenal Street in Watertown. Uh, and they handle uh, in their space about 40 patients a day, um, seven days a week. And their experience is that one call a month is to 911 average. Okay. And in the event they do show up, it's always in the front. So as I said, even if you have a designated spot, parking lot, we have right next to the building. Ambulance goes by typically in the front, and, and the fire truck is there as well. Um, so it would really depend on the EMT coordinator on duty that day. Or it's, a, it's a concern, uh, you know. Absolutely. But, but you have a question. question. Well. That's a good question because you know you're right. There are certain facilities where people get picked up in an ambulance just regularly. We we don't do that. Uh, okay. So ours is just someone sick comes in. Let's say someone is having a chest pain, a heart attack. We're like, you got to get to the ER, mm -hmm. and that by by law we have to put him in an ACLS ambulance, nine one one, both out the door. Okay. And so it's not like hey, just come pick him up with a with an ambulance. So that's not what we do. Okay, but some but some do some facilities do that, right? Do they do it? Only hospital-based satellite offices okay. would do it. We we are not a hospital-based system. We are a freestanding urgent care, so okay. it's yeah. a very different thing. Okay. That just no, but that's a great question. We can that's a very good question. call a cab if it's a non-emergent nature and the patient needs to get back and they're not willing to drive their car back for any reason. They you know so, but typically that's about it. We never really call the ambulance unless okay. it's nine one one. But uh, what I'm trying to lead to it is is trying to get most of your uh, vehicle traffic from Mass Ave to back to the park, where the parking lot is. That, <coughs> that frees up the street. Yes. And it, it makes it less dangerous, just less, you know, a lot of things going on there. That's, yes. that's my main concern right there. That's pretty much I, what I had. Okay. Um, just a couple questions. So you've got the reception desk here out at the front. What's going to happen with the back entrance? You know, that back okay, entrance so right the there. Way How's, what's the flow going to be yeah, like? So the, the, because of the nature of this business, everything has to be centralized. So since we have uh, NASA, we have we have an entrance here, so we can if there's any walking traffic, yeah. people you know coming by public transportation, they can enter through here, go down the corridor, and register at the 
the uh, front desk. Uh, okay. Front and then the people from the back entrance were coming through here into the corridor mm -hmm. and they come right Okay, so it's that corridor. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's why we, we have the extra. And is there a bell here or do, is it's it locked? It's open. We door. probably have a bell so that we are aware of someone is walking through the door. There will be cameras and things. So. Okay. Uh, but the main reception would be right here where the patients would sit here, get registered, then, you know. I should emphasize that the original square footage for Bagelville uh, was uh, this area right here. And because of that whole question that you raised, uh, it prompted the um, uh, requirement of taking square footage from this currently vacant space. Oh, okay. Uh, to allow for that oh, that's what's going on. Yeah. Okay, got it. We just wanted to make it easy for yes. people and, and for either side, and so we have to take that extra space just for the corridor, essentially. Plus, we also want the parking to go in the back. Yeah, I, well, that's that's more that's my question, we, is that's because why we that I want to make sure that, yeah. Yeah. that I saw the reception up here, and I got yeah. scared that somehow yeah. okay. they weren't going to well, be able to make that's the reason for getting that extra space and to have you be here, because we want to be sure to focus it back here. Okay. On the on the on the parking lot. Okay, and on the on the front windows here, um, is the plan to keep them uh, open and un, uh, unshaded at this point? Because, you know, frankly, there's a few stores down there that have covered up all their windows, and I don't even think that's correct. Basically, so I think we require these to stay open, um, so to present a little bit better storefront to the the neighborhood. We follow what the town requirement Okay. Currently in Watertown, we have this um, past two light um, um, yeah. decals, which might just say uh, vaccinations available here. So, but it's but otherwise okay. Uh, it's really and but we do we've kept them like half the window, so it's still open. You can still see people yeah. sitting there. Yeah, I see from both ends. Basically. And again, it was allowed over there. So yeah, we did yeah, I definitely there. would want you to work with staff and the building yeah. coordinator yeah, so on that's that. Not so. Yeah, so and then, and then, lastly, and I think uh, Andy's going to talk about it a little bit more. But you know, I, I think that this right here, probably, I mean, from my perspective, is especially lit up, is is not what we'd usually find in a sign. Um, and that I think what Andy's going yeah, to yeah. talk about yeah, yeah. Is, is maybe just trying to uh, put it as a, a, a as an underscore over here okay. versus over. I mean, it's just not. It's not typically something that we've done in town. Um, Could you get it over here and just do some rearranging and get one long line that says Watkins Walk 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 week. Yeah, that, that's it, just it looks that, a little. Yeah, it's. It's a just the weird. way they allow. One of the towns allowed it in uh, one of the recent locations, so they suggested we can always. This is not you know, we can move it around and move all the things. Sure. Put, put it all in, in, in here. You got a lot of room in here. Can we then? Have another AMC Doctors Express logo right there because we have essentially two storefronts. Is or can we have the word urgent care over here? Just um, I would prefer that the logo go there. Okay. But that it should be in a in a red background like that. Okay. With white lettering. I'd rather get it all in here if you can, because. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to do it, just make it look nice instead of kind of cluttery oh, like this. This is, uh, yeah, I think it'd be definitely nicer in the way it's. This looks like someone's just writing on the yeah, yeah, yeah. panel. So take yeah. a red panel and put it right in there like that, and then use your white letters so it's kind of nice and neat and mm -hmm. clean and looks. Sure, Bruce was here and say white letters no, right? We can actually. <laughs> I'm channeling Bruce. I said red letters. I meant red letters. No, <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want to do, but, but on the red background. We can um, like obviously working. present the renderings that are of the actual location, so this is done much, it looks much nicer than the way it's looking right now, but we're happy to move just the logo there and remove all this here. Yeah, it just looks like it's going to start blinking every mm -hmm. other yeah, second, basically. Yeah, it looks a little. <laughs> Like that, neon, that neon sound. Uh, so, so would you uh, allow us to kind of work with the planning department on uh, uh, how would you want to develop this so that yeah. you know, we can satisfy both the landlord. I mean, we can give them a permit and ask them to come back with the sign. Yeah, with the sign. We would want to see the sign. Would you be willing to do yeah. that? Yeah. To represent the sign. No, I think what I think oh, what Laura's saying too. So long as I mean. No, I'm saying. Give it. 
give the permit the, on the condition that it be reviewed with? That they have to come back. Either yeah. come back to the board with the signs or, or the staff, staff to support. Approves. I mean, yeah. um, at the very least, it should come back choice. to the staff. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah. But anyway, so those those are my comments okay. for it. So Andy, kind of but it still come to that. Um, so in Watertown, you have um, five, four or five, did you say, that are running through per hour? Uh, exams, did you say? Oh, page no, six. patients. So four an hour. Four an hour. And here, it's, so it's four an hour there. We're, we're, and here's going to be six. We're hoping, because of the, the larger size. And more, our limitation in Watertown is the number of exam rooms. I see. The smaller uh, size. And here we have eight exam rooms. So we, we, we see with two providers, it's very easily, uh, six is an easy doable and number. How does Watertown work with parking? We're, we're looking now, you're, risk, you're requesting the 80% of requirement, right? Six. Uh, for, yeah, for the parking you're saying? Yes. So it's, we really are, turnaround time is within the hour, door to door. So each hour that we are seeing six patients, we will essentially be using six spots. Is that's, that the way it's working in Watertown? And we have a much tighter parking lot in Watertown. And we are doing 40 patients with just a 15. About 15, yeah, 15. 15. Do you expect people to drive you well to take public transportation? Um, we, how do they we, we've seen everything, I'll be honest with you. Most of the, most of the people prefer to drive because, you know, when people are sick, they want to just pull up right to the door, park their car, and come in. And so we really keep the turnaround time uh, for that reason uh, within the hour so that we can make sure without compromising on the quality of care, we just want to make sure the time spent with the provider is maximum instead of them just sitting and waiting in the waiting area or in the exam rooms, and that really helps. So you have 15 parking places in Mauritania? Yes. And with less patients? Um, and here you have... No, but we have another. We have another co-tenant there. We are a standalone uh, oh. facility there. So we share the space with. Uh, so we have what, se we have seven we have seven, seven spots for us. I see. And I then see. the co-tenant next to us. So it's a, the lot is fifteen spaces. Oh, I see what you're saying. We, we have seven there. designated spots there. And here you have eight. Um, might I point out about the parking, Mr. West, that the entire project has an eighty percent uh, uh, reduction. No, 20% reduction, uh, but uh, the original permits granted uh, parking uh, with um, uh, the benefit of the reduction in the spaces. I think honestly, compared to Panera, it's going to be way fewer cars. Panera was really a high. Um, That's what I wanted to ask ask you because I don't think Bagelville ever had the traffic no. that Panera had, but. Um, <laughs> So it's, you're saying it's, it's part of a larger shared parking lot, mm -hmm. adequate parking, will not add traffic congestion. So you think that the overall parking lot, 67 spaces? Mm -hmm. There's 68 shared non-exclusive um, spots for all the tenants in the plaza. Right. It's, eight of those will be designated for... Um, None of which are going to be designated in the sense that they're exclusive for their use. Um, it would really just be use for the overall center. Right. Mm -hmm. Can you identify yourself for the minutes, please? I'm sorry, Christine Cannon, leasing um, representative for Beer Briar Development. Christine Cannon? Cannon, C A N N O N. And you're, you're finding that's uh, working out? Mm -hmm. I, think, um, I think you hit the nail on the head. Panera was really um, the main driver, and people would come in have lunch, bring their laptop, and spend a few hours. Um, Bagelville, I don't think, had that same traction. They Not only did they not capture the audience, but the audience that they did capture um, tend to come in, either take their food and leave, or come in, have their lunch and leave. So, so you don't have that same kind of campground atmosphere that Panera created, um, which, which caused some of the parking restraints at that time. But you're going to have, these are going to be full of these eight parking spaces, because you're churning through 
Yeah, we're coming in on a little bit. Eight, eight per hour, yeah. So that, that load is going to be adequately taken care of, you think, by your overall? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Yeah. some of the other uh, the co-tenants in that plaza don't have such a heavy parking requirement. Yeah. Um, for example, there's a massage envy um, in the end cap unit uh, opposite to where their space will be, and those are mainly appointments. Um, you know, do a lot of walk-in, so those are kind of scheduled, um, and we, we can certainly get a customer count from them to get an understanding of that. Um, you know, same thing, I think Petco, you kind of come in, you, you do your shopping, and you go. Um, Sherwin-Williams, same idea. So there's not a lot of people coming in and spending a lot of time at the plaza, um, and I think that's what helps um, with keeping the parking turning over. Do you have any management of that parking that we have a property manager who visits the site regularly, um, at least two to three times a week. Um, and although we, we do not, um, it, it, he's not in charge of policing and regulating the parking there, um, um, he does monitor it and report back to us. Um, and like you guys said, um, with Panera no longer at the plaza, there really hasn't been an issue with parking for the tenants there. So where do you, do you encourage employees to park? Anywhere do they park there, or do you we encourage employees to use it? public parking opposed to the parking that's on site? We we ask them um, to to use the on site parking for customers. For so where customers. where do they park across the street? Um, I think some people park on the street, and I think some people may park in public lots. Is that a public lot across the street? Yes, mm -hmm. right next yeah. to Sunrise. It was designated as part of the Sunrise mm -hmm. approvals that regardless of the sign that says it's reserved the sunrise. <laughs> oh, yeah, we had talked about that. Uh, we, we had talked about that. So do you yeah, need a car sure to get in there? I'm sorry? Does, does one need a car to get into that? It's the honor system right now. It's yeah. self-policed by the businesses up there. Chuck Pappas, I own the abutting property, 1386. It's self-policed right now by the employees and, and business owners that use it. Occasionally the MBTA sneaks in. And some has to be How said. How much of it is able to be used by uh, employees of the businesses or? Businesses? That whole side is open to all the business owners to use. I, uh, how many employees are going to be at this unit? Oh, at a time we have fifteen. Fifteen. Um, minimum, but the only part that we provide, or we even in our water application, is just to the provider. So the, the staff has to find parking, public parking. So we have a physician and a, and a PA who, who we provide on-site right. parking. Right. Everyone else goes to. We're expecting to see six patients an hour and then two sure. patients. That's eight spots. Required. Are they talking about the, so the number of people working? Oh, There's only five. 15. And 15? Yeah, like but you're overall, not, like but you're at not a time. But at a time, at a time shift. Yeah. I'm five. So sorry. I'm yeah. Five. Yeah. Are you, they're all driving. They may or they may take public transport. We have, we have folks right now who come to Watertown on the public transport. It depends on their needs. We have a bus and uh, There's a bus right that there. drives right in front Some of folks take the bus. A lot of people take the public because they don't have cars. Some people drive the park in the public lot. It would be useful because we're kind of putting this together as part of our whole town parking to, they call it net parking management plan, mm -hmm. but to know that there's an effort being made to oh. not have the employees park where your customers are parking, or at least to minimize the effect. <coughs> I think that happens quite a bit where these parking places get plugged up by the people, people who can potentially. So it's a question of how many are available. If it was five, it could be either, it could be less than five because some are taking public transportation, but that a number of them might be encouraged and able to use the lot across the street so that that would leave the eight spaces available for exactly. the mixed use that's going on. In and it enhances the benefit of the Would you be willing to put owner. that as a condition that you will be looking at managing the employee parking such that it frees up the maximum amount of Oh, we already do believe me. Like right now in Watertown, we have, we have a neighboring lot where the employee will park. They don't park on our, on our center's lot. So you have to kind of coordinate it with the businesses yeah. that are already exactly. yeah. around yeah. there. We'll do what we can to help our employees park elsewhere so that the spots are available truly for the patients. It, it, it makes, it's better as a board, I think, for us because we're giving an 80% 
already. So we want to start hearing, for obvious reasons, solutions that are good solutions. And we have our center administrator that uh, enforces this, and then during winter time it gets worse. You know, when the snow comes and the parking lot gets even tighter, we have to make sure we actively enforcing that. Mr. West, it also works to the business owner's advantage to have the employees away from the question of the party. Um, then the only other thing I have is the uh, lighting. Something you mentioned, Laura, about the lighting. Uh, neat details not given. Oh, fully shielded. Um, was there information about the, sun, the lighting? The, uh, I, maybe the lighting isn't changing. There's no just, change in lighting. Will there be light on the sign? Uh, the outside sign? Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Then there's no, there's no, no, no issue on the lighting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's all right. Okay. I will open it up for public questions. Comment. Some check It's just some comments on listening to your emergency vehicles. The occasional 911. Just keep in mind, if you're on the street, if the fire truck is on the street, which he'll have to be, which he does on other calls that have been there, um, you then stop the bus traffic because they cannot get in. They can't get out of their lot. So just something to keep in mind on that. Um, the current lot that we're using, when her first heard 15, we couldn't handle that, but five can handle fine, just keep in mind. That's a shared lot also still for sunrise. There are some days that it's completely full, so it would be best if you can get some of the employees to do public transportation. There are there is nowhere else. There is no off site lot anywhere up in the heights. There there is the only alternative is on the street, which is time limited. So just can urge that. Um, my personal opinion, I'm disappointed on the use of this building because uh, this goes completely against, um, you know, what all the things we've talked about are planned for the retail district. Um, it takes away another spot of retail. It takes another service or restaurant, which would have been greatly uh, a better choice there. But uh, in no way would that have that influence, you know, any business that fits in a proper space on that. The other thing is we still have one store open there, so all the thought process still has to be is what's going there. You know, will that then, if we're constantly always approving buildings at 80% parking, which I personally am against on developments, especially when there's alternatives. There were alternatives when it's built, but that's too late on that. Um, the other thing I'll mention is anytime that building changes use, my parking lot changes use. And I get tired of being the bad guy of kicking the other customers out because our, par our parking lot is much more convenient because they drive by the building, the single entrance parking lot. My driveway is right there. Your building and your use is right there. And when the Jenny Craig was there, we could have paid somebody and made money <laughs> kicking them out. Um, Panera took a, a year or so of training until we got people. But just keep that in mind when you do open up that... When your customers come in, just you know, maybe ask them, did you park in back, um, in case they did park next door for me. That's all I have. Any other comments? Anything else from the board? Um, well, we can make a motion, I think. Uh, we'd like signs to come, but so there's a few, uh, right, so, uh, a few conditions that we want to make sure, just the general conditions. General conditions are already in there, and then a few additional special conditions as well. And then we would add to modify the signage from what's presented to consolidate it in a single area or augment the suggested location in a more attractive way. No? Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you want it to come back here, or do you want the staff? I'll tell you, if, if if this starts getting played with, I guess I want it to come back. Okay, if we if, get rid if, of that completely? If you get rid of that completely, I'd Michael, say... And integrate it into the... I prefer to get rid of it completely. That, I, I agree, and I think it can come, come, come back to staff. staff. That, that I think it can come to staff if it just does here. If it's just one sign, it can go to staff. 
But if it if you're, you're playing you around expand to the wall, if you expand to the wall, I think I'd like it to come back. Or I think we fair enough. Mm -hmm. I agree. I wanted to say something about uh, with the condition that the uh, tenant employs parking management practices which reduce employee parking within the main lot mm -hmm. as well as uh, uh, monitoring um, um, overflow monitoring parking that would be designated I'm trying to say not to park in his lot. Absolutely and you know we see that in Watertown, and we uh, always say work in a, in a better way. <laughs> and, we, and encourage people to use transit sometimes. Yeah. And, and to uh, uh, to utilize the, the spaces provided in the main lot rather than other businesses. The, by the main lot, you mean the the main lot, the main yeah. lot. The, the yeah. general yeah. we've required applicants to kind of explain where parking is appropriate and available and to avoid other lots we right add that in as a condition right so that they actually actively say as the gentleman said look did you there's a sign there that says parking for this facility within the mm -hmm. lot only yeah. sure and so th there is a parking a very clearly labeled parking sign um, on the monument sign in the center that directs traffic that should direct traffic directly into the the back entrance where her customers will be there and right now our current experience is sometimes patients, you know, that say they're driving in, they don't realize they're pulled into the wrong parking lot. If, if the neighbor comes and says, you know, they parked in my lot, the staff just tells them they're very happy to move it to the spot. They just don't know, but we will implement that as well actively. We do that in Watertown. It just, you know, sometimes people are not focusing where the parking lot is, and so they tend to pull up here and there. Um, if if there's if there is ample room in the parking lot, it might be better for the employees to park in the lot rather than on the street because that's sure, where the casual. The street, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, rather than are. on the front, for sure. Yeah. But I'm talking okay. about the lot across the way. I see. Okay, yeah. that's the. But on street parking is just time limited, so it's not like the employees would park there. They would just they can't be going out there all the time. They, they can't move with their car every two hours. That doesn't. I don't think that works for employee parking. No, employee parking should be across the way as much as in the other lot. Or, or by transit. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what they want to encourage. The, the point is to get the public to be able to use all of the street space, as much of the street spaces and the parking spaces, so you get a more active, you get more availability, and the business does better because you can park. You have a good experience. Okay, I understand. I'll, I'll put a condition. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, I so moved that uh, the special permit for, uh, for application by Health Rex LLC, DVA Doctors Express, um, be approved with the conditions uh, set forth. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. Um, we'll either meet at a semi-again, which is great, or the I talked to the event manager at Cambridge. We can either meet there. So we have okay. two spots there. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll see you. Okay. Great. Very nice to meet you. Yeah, I'd love to hear. Uh, maybe I'll just play to hear a little more about the parking situation back there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a great idea. Hey, how are you yeah, doing? Yeah, here. Oh, it's a long time. Yeah, exactly. How are you doing? Okay. Oh, you're doing well. Thank you. I guess I can fall into that category. I think that'll be fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Sure. I can tell you that it really has not been an issue since Panera has been replaced. Panera really was um, one of the main issues. It was a large restaurant. People spent a lot of time there, and they had the capacity to see, you know, 35, 40 people at right. any given time. And so that's where a real problem was created. 
Um, we're not seeing those same issues today. Um, so when you go back there in a busy time, are there empty spots? Absolutely. A lot of them? 10? Uh, 10 plus. <laughs> yeah, I, to 20 plus. I, I live there, I go by there, I go in the back, mm -hmm. and you know, often see 15, 20. Years. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of what I wanted to get mm -hmm. a sense of. So um, we should, we and then I would say. employees in the back then. Um, that's I, a better place. Um, we would rather not have tenants develop that habit in the event that we did provide a restaurant use later down the line mm -hmm. um, because once tenants kind of get into a habit it, it's very very difficult to regulate it mm -hmm. um, and we, we would like to be able to keep that lot um, available for customers only in the event that we did have somebody who had a higher parking use mm -hmm. I guess. Um, How much more footage is in that uh, vacant space right now? Um, so, so with this um, now being moved mm -hmm. forward, um, the existing space is 2,400 square feet. They're going to take about 500 square feet of that. It's going to be reduced down to about 1,900 remaining. 1,900. Mm -hmm. About 1,900 square feet remaining, give and take. And when that wall is moved over, we'll have to remeasure it to get an exact square footage. But it's going to be in that range. Do you have anybody? Are you looking at anybody for that space? Sure. And we're kind of staying along the health and wellness theme. Um, in a 1,900 square foot space, it would be difficult to put um, a real attractive restaurant. I know that that's um, with the other gentleman um, is kind of encouraging more restaurant use. Um, but we're kind of keeping with the health and wellness theme. Um, we, we are negotiating right now with um, a user that would be similar uh, platform to Massage Envy. It's in that service beauty category. Um, and so I think it would help with the Massage Envy sales as well as um, hair cuttery. I think it's a lot of the same customer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Sure. Thanks Thank so much you. for having us. <laughs> and you're okay with moving the handicap spaces? They said they've talked about that. Yep, yep, and okay. we provided it as part of the lease, and now I think it's just a part of uh, making sure that it's been the regulatory, everything is all set with that. I'm assuming okay. the curb cuts will be worth right? Exactly, yeah, so there, yeah, there's going to be a lot of moving pieces. And a lot. No, there's a curb cut. They showed it, yeah. Yeah, they yeah. showed it. Yeah. In the front? Ramp, no. Oh, where? in the back. Yeah. 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 So that'll Next have to get relocated, and there's some regulations that go along with that. I don't know if like, the sidewalk might need to be wide, and there's some other regulations that kind of go, and that'll be part of the package. Yeah, that, that, yeah it was pretty mm -hmm. And anything else, please feel free to send me an email or call me, I and I'll have my yes. information there. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Moving on, uh, discussion about zoning amendments for upcoming town meeting. Uh, a report from the Master Plan Implementation Committee. Okay. On one. Uh, we met, the Master Plan Implementation Committee met once, and then each of the, that they formed three working groups. One was to look at uh, changes to the residential zoning to deal with the problem of um, large additions and teardowns and big much bigger houses going in. And then one subcommittee, not subcommittee, working group was was um, met to talk about mixed use and parking. And uh, and then we also had a, um, a group to talk about historic, there was a historic grant that we were thinking about applying for, but we're now not thinking about applying for that because it turned out everything we wanted to apply for had been done. We just didn't know it. So, um, we have we do have the all day dog, which um, you weren't here for that. But these people came in last month and said they wanted to do a dog boarding, like a dog daycare during the day, but also overnight boarding. And our bylaw does not allow that now. So they they have a um, ten registered voters petition coming in to um, change the zoning to allow overnight. So that is definitely going to the board. Um, and, and Ted helped them write that. Um, so the two other things are more complicated. One is, so the residential. Um, uh, in the, the meeting that we had about um, the residential zoning was uh, with the building inspector, and he um, sort of came up with the idea of counting the garage area in the square footage, which makes the house in relation to the lot bigger and uh, I mean the square footage counts so that it, 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 well <laughs> basically uh, what it is is it, it uh, increases the amount of open space required because right now the amount of open space required on residential lots is uh, linked to the 
size of the house that you put on it. So included right now, garage area is not included in the gross square footage calculation. This would include it and thus add 30 percent of this of that extra added space to the uh, required set aside for open space. Uh, we also um, we considered increasing the amount of um, gross floor area set aside for open space uh, as a means of further controlling massing. Um, looking at possibly going from 30 percent uh, of gross floor area for open usable open space to 40 percent. Um, and we're from 35 to 40. Did you say? Oh, well, I was uh, 30 to 40. Right now, it's 30. The minimum is 30 percent open space of gross floor area. Uh, it is reserved for open space on the lot, and we're looking for the 40 percent. So that that will control the massing that the houses can't won't be able to be quite as big. Right. Uh, there's also uh, we're looking at and uh, working with the engineering department to uh, put a uh, a maximum grade for driveways. Uh, right now, uh, there's a number of developments with uh, new developments with. Uh, driveways and garages beneath uh, the uh, habitable levels uh, in basements. Some of them are very, very steep, and uh, they're able to uh, fit, uh, because the driveways are so, are so steep, they're able to fit uh, larger homes into smaller lots. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the building inspector was in favor of having a maximum grade for driveways, not only to uh, help control size of buildings on small lots, but also to uh, improve egress uh, and, and just to uh, you know, make sure developers build driveways that people can get into and out of, especially during the winter. Well, I, I guess I wanted to add one thing for Andy in particular, that um, it doesn't deal with the problem of having the big driveway in front of the house with the two garages and the big curb cut on the sidewalk. And if you go to a street that has a number of those, you'll see it's like a huge curb cut and then a little bit of sidewalk and then another huge curb cut. And we haven't really... Um, two garages? Sometimes there's two car garages if it's Separate. a two-family house. Ne well, no, next to each other. Oh, oh yeah, well, the two, Or it two could base. be a double-wide... It could be a large garage that might garage, hold garage. one larger car and then have space left over for storage or whatnot. But it's they're fairly, they're, they're the biggest garages that can fit underneath the town hall. Right, you and know, it's that. a 20 foot, uh, 20, how wide can the curb can be 24? 20 feet. 20 well, feet. The, the, the radius is 24 feet, but the driveway it's width 20. is 20 feet. If the garage is down below, mm -hmm. is it still within FAR? Well, that's what we're, we're going to change. In your recommendation. Well, uh, yes. right. So the building inspector uh, recommended against implementing an FAR uh, calculation as part of the zoning. But, it, but it's within, it gets counted as the floor area. It's not counted now. Right. As the floor area. Right now, gross floor area does not include attached floor well, accessory parking. Including underground garages. Right. Yeah. We're proposing to include parking space now in gross floor area measurement. Whether it's above grade or below grade. Right. Towards the FAR. Well, there's no FAR requirement for residential zoning districts right now. Okay. But the way it plays out is that the gross floor area, you, you have to have open space is 30, I think it's 35%. 35% of the floor area has to be open space. Well, right now, it's, yeah, the, the, the usable open space required on a lot is linked to the amount of gross floor area. Uh, not footprint, just gross floor area. Gross floor area, not footprint. But the total gross floor area. Okay, so now you... But that right. But the important distinction is right now that does not include parking spaces, either detached garages or uh, attached garages to the main building. So if you want to put your two-car garage in your house, you've got to have a smaller living area. Well, the whole trick, the house would have to be smaller, is what you're arguing. Mm -hmm. But what you're trying to do well, is make it smaller buildings. I'm sorry. I'm talking yeah. about. You're, you're trying to make smaller buildings to fit more on scale of the character of the context of the neighborhood, right? right? Mm -hmm. Correct. And so you're adding, you're counting the garage as part of that space. Correct. And you said the other way of doing it is just increasing the square footage open area, right? So you're doing two things. Yes. We're proposing, well, 
as a result of these discussions that we had with the residential working group of the Master Plan Implementation Committee, we are uh, right now advocating uh, looking at two primary ways of controlling residential building mass. One is including parking area into the gross floor area measurement. And the other is increasing the amount, the minimum amount of usable open space. To 40%. To 40% of the gross floor area. So the coverage of the lot. Yeah, it's now going to be... Well, and there's also a lot coverage standard, which is 35%. That's the maximum footprint you can have right now. And, and, you, and you're proposing to all, all those, or just one of those? One no, right now, right now, in, in R0, R1, and R2 zoning districts, the maximum lot coverage is 35%. We're not proposing to change that. Also, right now, the minimum amount of usable open space required on a lot is 30% of your gross floor area. We're, say, we're proposing to increase that to 40%. And that's it? And, and we're also, right now, gross floor area does not include parking garage. So you would do both, that's what I'm saying. You two things, exactly. but not two three. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's hitting on FAR in a, I know, it's in, in, in a roundabout right. way. Yeah. Right, and that was the building inspector's suggestion, not well, Yes. Yeah. No. No. I just w I wanted to say we we looked at at setting an FAR. Right now, there's no FAR, and it just became um, tricky because in some neighborhoods you might want to have a third, what what the numbers were like around 50, right. 55, 60. You know, in an, in the where the bigger lots are, you might want to allow a little more or a little less or a little less, right. and it just it it. it since we have to go by zoning district, we can't go street by street, neighborhood by neighborhood. If that, we couldn't, I didn't feel comfortable with any number that we came up with that this was the right number for the whole town. So that's why we then started to say, well, let's look at it in relation to the law. And and then also there was this problem with the garages where there's these big, big garages that are not counted at all towards the, the floor area. I think I can see how it, it varies, you're saying. So if you have a regular two-family house in East Arlington, you couldn't go in there and put a garage in it for free, so to speak, for, for, no, F, for no effect. You couldn't right. add that and lift the house up. Right, which is what they're doing, what right. the developers are doing now. So it's, whereas it doesn't prevent those houses from being nicely, but that's the neighborhood, that's the character of the neighborhood, they're all right next to each other. Whereas if you did an FAR, you might, <clears throat> excuse me, try to change that character of that neighborhood because you have to reduce. Well, they're still subject to the total coverage. Of well, if you if you add an FAR requirement, they'd be bound by the lot coverage requirement and the FAR requirement. They'd be bound by two and the open space requirements. I'm just trying to curious how you analyzed it for neighborhood for type. Well, we used uh, assessor's records and GIS records, and uh, we I looked at every parcel and calculated uh, a, uh, an FAR based on the assessor's records. And say, like in some neighborhoods, what was the range of FARs? Uh, in there there was a, a wide range in different uh, neighborhoods. Yeah, I looked at it by street, by precinct, by a district, zoning district, and there was well, some neighborhoods had a wide variation and others not as wide. You know, in Arlington Heights, especially around the Dallin School, those were a little bit more uniform. Those streets were a little bit and more what uniform. Was the number? Uh, they averaged around an FAR of 0.4 to 0.5. That was typical of post-war suburban housing, especially you know smaller units mm -hmm. geared for veterans and blue-collar. Uh, people. Uh, the interwar uh, suburban development up around the water tower in Arlington Heights and uh, around um, Robbins Farm uh, tended to be a bit larger. That FAR average is about 0 0.54, 0 0.53. Um, they were built for a different um, market uh, segment. And uh, then the Victorian era homes that survive, they average about uh, uh, their FAR average is about 0 0.53, 0 0.54. They're higher FAR? 
they're bigger. But they seem to sit back and have more power. Right, yeah, some of the lots are, are bigger as well. Yeah. And We're not in East Arlington. No. Oh, well, then in East Arlington, you get more two family homes. Those out there are much higher. They average about 0 0.8, 0 0.9. And, and what about the um, newer houses that are being built? The newer houses, uh, houses built after 2000 average uh, around 0 0.67, 0 0.7. Yeah. Uh, so significantly higher. Um, the town-wide average for all types of single-family housing is an FAR of 0.49. I'm, so, just, I'm just trying to get my hands around what, you, what you're saying here, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to see how what the, how's that affect um, um, families or not families buying homes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just saying, for example, um, say families right now that are buying homes in Arlington, uh, most likely to be dual income, mm -hmm. um, two cars. And if you start adding, they're going to need two cars just for working. So if, if you start adding that car square footage, mm -hmm into the house square footage and you're taking away some of the square footage from the house. Mm -hmm. So you're living it to now two bedrooms instead of three bedrooms. I'm just, I don't know, I'm not saying, I'm just yeah. thinking, okay? Yeah. And what happens then now that now there are less three bedroom homes uh, because of this change and this less families? Or it might be less, you know, recreate basement, you know, discretionary space as a playroom or something like that. It but that's not be. counted now anyways. I mean, it, well, the basement yeah. is a basement. I mean, you don't count the basement. Well, it, it, it is counted if it's the height is over seven feet, three inches. Okay. And it's not used for mechanical purposes. So that is counted right now. Um, and same thing with attic space. If it's over seven feet, three inches, that's, and, you know, and it's not. It needs to be, be closed, yeah. heated, and everything yeah, else. Yeah, yes, right, that's yeah. okay. But no, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm just mm -hmm. questioning no, it's, it's, the fact that you know, right. I don't want to discourage families from living in Arlington. Right. Well, household size has been dropping for years, yes. and so we're seeing um, you know relatively smaller households inhabit a lot more space. So uh, your point is well taken that that it could, in some cases, inhibit the number of bedrooms being built on certain lots on smaller lots. Uh, but I think what we're seeing now is very large homes being built for relatively smaller households. So there's a lot of room in these new homes that can shrink down. No, I understand I understand what you're trying to say, and I encourage what you're trying to say. I'm not okay, discouraging sure. that, okay? Yeah. I'm just trying to see what the ramifications are by just making this thing happen, right. and then what are the effects on other areas. Sure. Mm -hmm. And that's, I'm just, and I don't know my, I don't know the answer. So okay. Right. I'm just bringing it up as a question. Sure. And we thought, of, we thought a little bit about that, too, in working with the committee. Right. I mean, in the process of the master plan, one of the complaints that people had was that um, the houses that are being built are just different than the houses that are in the neighborhood now, and they're changing the character of the neighborhood, and they're um, looming over the smaller, less tall houses. So we're trying to respond to that criticism and see if we can find something that will um, help to control the, you know, to keep things more in keeping with the way the networks are now. Can that be done with um, heights, setbacks? Uh, I don't know. I'm just bringing up things up. Just uh, We could consider, you know, we have thought of different setback controls too. Um, right now, in residential districts, they're 10 feet side yard setbacks. One thought we uh, were looking at was having a 25 foot total setback width, and one side could be, you could have two 12 and a half setbacks, or one could, side could be 10 feet, the other side could be 15 feet, or something like that. Um, that's one idea we had considered. Um, if we could take a look at that again, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to say, no, I, I, I appreciate what you're trying to do. Yeah. But I, I encourage it. I'm just, I'm just concerned by doing these two things here. What happens? You know, they're going to start building two car, uh, two car garages. Fine. They just do two bedrooms, and because I don't think the cars are going to go away. Um, when it's dual income, I just, you know, 
In, in some neighborhoods, one you're seeing more cars with one more na more houses with one car in East Arlington walkable to Elwood, but less so. They we spoke with some realtors last week, and they said like Pleasant Street is the cutoff. East of Pleasant Street is a less car focused population. The new new mm -hmm. owners, and but west of Pleasant Street is still more two car families. Whatever that's worth. The, the bylaw still requires two parking spaces per house, so yeah. regardless. But they're not in garages necessarily. No, they're not. Yeah. It could be a driveway. Yeah. It could be tandem. It could be on the side. Yeah. Yeah. So not in the front. You can't the park side. in the front. Body not body. in the front. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right here for so, garage. Say, like on a 6,000 square foot lot, if we added in the um, gross square footage, can we give them an estimate of what the ha the difference in the house, what the house size would be? If not today, then next time. Uh, we'll yeah, I, 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 we could work yes. up. Why don't we try to? I think work it would be interesting because there's, you know, each neighborhood kind of is a deal. Yes. Take each neighborhood and test it and see what would happen. Mm -hmm. to yeah. Literally to the house. We're we're setting up. Um, I think it might that make, exercise yeah. with the building inspector. We'll, we'll work with. I think that's useful because it, what okay. you're doing may just be right. It just has to be. I think it has to be tested again. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Or else we're not going to win. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you have any thoughts about the driveway problem? The driveway? The well, I agree with that. I know you don't like it, right. But because I think it, it just breaks up the lot, so now you've got this big ramp in front of you. It's not a good model for mm -hmm. any kind of housing. It's not very welcome. <laughs> and you can't walk across it, so now you've got a break in your whole... There's no yard there. It's a gully. Right. Um, I don't think it's a great housing model, but I don't know how. That's it, what's being built. Like is 100 percent of what's being built. Is it? New houses have that now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was the New Jersey model where I'm from. I think there's one on Highland Ave that's right now for that kind of real steep uh, driveway. Uh, I, I looked at it and I said, like, well, I just don't see how that could be safe. We, we went down to um, Margaret Street, which is right in, in East Arlington, and there's like a whole oh, row of them. There's a whole row of them, and it's just like there's no sidewalk there. It's all driveways. Basically. And they're very steep. Yeah, very steep. Yeah, I would imagine that some cars would hit their undercarriages as they go into the bottom out into the garage. It's, they're really steep. Is there some sort of zoning right now for, um, can, this, can the driveways be has to be so far away from from each other. Not that I, not that we have seen. Yeah. And but what about a curb cut width? Yes. Curb cut width is prescribed. If you have a 20 foot opening, the maximum curb cut width with the radiuses is 24 feet. So you can have a double wide. Right. You can sloped have, wall. Sloped. Right. You can have <laughs> one driveway. You can't have two except by special permit. One driveway but double width. Right. Yeah. 24 feet. As you see with everything. That's two cars. Right. Two family homes. And the, so, yes. the minimum frontage is 60 feet, so that means almost half <coughs> driveway. Yeah, right. Third, a third can be driveway, not half. Oh, yeah. Yeah, not very attractive. All right, well, we'll have to keep working. Well, maybe that's something to attack. Well, we're trying, but we'll have to come up with it. <laughs> that's Perfect. hard. To one car. Uh huh. And, and then you stack, mm -hmm. like everybody does. Hmm. Okay. That's, that's, that's but then you would have to allow, we'd have to change the parking to allow parking on the driveway in the front yard. Because now no. you can park in the driveway if your driveway's uh, on the side. Yeah, 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 I see. But not if it's mm. in the front. No, right. Which I understand why that is, but in this case it's just added to wide garages. Right. And if you push parking to the side, then you have the, instead of having one big curb cut in the middle, you have two. 10 foot curb cuts on the side, so you're breaking it up. You're differently differentiating the segmentation, but you still have yes. a lot of segmentation. So to add those curb cuts, still the same. Right. Yes. So it's um it's something, but we'll look at we'll definitely look at that. We'll work with that. Yeah. We'll, we'll try to refine that. Would e either of you or any of you want to be on that subcommittee? That if we can get a working group together to talk about it again with the Master Plan Implementation Committee and the Building Inspector 
Is anybody interested in trying to attend? Sure, I can. Um, oh, go ahead. That's good. Uh, okay. I have to, there's always be an alternate. Okay. This, for the I don't weekly want to, trip. That's your interest. I don't no, want to. No, no, I'm interested, but you'll film me. <laughs> right. The meetings, yeah. Well, for the next meeting, we'll, we'll uh, loop you Keep in. Keep me in the loop. loop. Okay, sure. Okay. Um, and then, uh, what did you want to Did you have some okay. suggestions, Mr. Warren? Uh, yes, I, I have a couple questions and, and a couple points I wanted to raise. Um, um, one is just a question. Um, we've all seen examples of this. A house is totally turned, torn down, but two walls are left standing at the corner. What's the deal with that? And then they build a monster house on top of it. I think that's perfectly well, but... I think that's what is considered a renovation. So it's, but, but they could tear the whole house down and build a new house as of right. Oh. Couldn't they? With the same setbacks? Maybe they're trying uh, to... I'm non-conforming lot. Are you talking about or? I don't, there's there's, there's so, so many of them, I can't believe they're all non-conforming lots. I'm just curious. Uh, I, I, don't don't know. I don't know how to answer that question. I would, I would guess what you said, that they, they're using a grandfathered condition. A lot of them are corner lots where this happens, but, but some, well, anyway, okay, that's just a question. I guess nobody seems to know the answer to that, but I, I keep asking. Well, as, as I mentioned when, when I was uh, with you before, um, I, I have a small committee that's working on some zoning ideas, and I'm, I'm glad to hear that uh, we kicked around some of the same things you guys are kicking around. Um, we thought about FAR. Um, we thought about much lower numbers than you were talking about, certainly much lower than 0.67. Um, um, we talked about. Um, um, Ed, you want to come sit, hmm? sit join us? Or? Oh, you want me to sit up there? Sure. Well, it, 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 we're yeah. talking. Yeah. I'd rather just be <laughs> talking <laughs> than. That makes it easier. Okay. Um, um, and uh, another uh, another uh, idea was um, uh, saying, okay, that the the uh, side yard setback. We haven't cast anything in concrete yet. We're still doing research and so But the side yard setback remains at 10 feet, but it must be at least 30 feet from the house next door. Or oh, say, e.g. 30 feet. Oh, you mean the, the exterior walls? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so that, uh, uh, well, you, you, you see what the point is. It's, no, you, I know. You, you, you're going in some, some of the same direction. The side but, yard setback is 10 feet, yeah. but the lot line has to be? No, the building yeah. wall. So if somebody, if somebody else is built closer, you have to go farther back, is yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, so so the, the distance between the two building so walls. So the build distance between the two, instead of being tw 20 feet, which could be 15 mm -hmm. feet, it could be, mm -hmm. I, I, know, I know a guy in, in, in the East End whose house is like that far from the border, you know, it was built 150 years ago or something. But, um, uh, so something was next to him, it couldn't be because that would be the whole lot. <laughs> You see what I mean? It, it, it's a part. It's part of the crowding issue where these new houses are so big. Another thing we looked at is uh, looking at the uh, at the how you measure this third floor attic space. Uh, if you notice, a lot of the third floors, uh, the half story third floors, are so close to a full story third floor that I said, how did they get to there? And apparently the building department has some curious way of considering what's, what's, what's usable space and what's not. Uh, there's a, a particularly uh, egregious example in uh, Venner Road, the, the house at the corner of, I think it's the corner of Hillsdale on the Cocaris' old lot, uh, where it's a, f a full exposed basement two floors and, and, and a third floor. That's, it's the one I mentioned at town meeting mm -hmm. last year. Uh, the third floor is a kind of a few shallow slopes. Um, you know, I, I don't know how, how, how to get to that. If um, I could just interject, there's yeah. one area that we did look at too, is um, right now a usable, um, usable space is defined as anything over seven foot three inches. Mm -hmm. In our zoning code, under the mass building code, it's seven feet. And we propose, as kind of a minor amendment, is reducing our standard down to seven feet instead, instead of seven foot three. Because right now, if you build a seven foot three or a seven foot basement, it's not considered as a story or an attic. Or, or an attic. Yes, if you have a seven foot attic space, it's not considered part of a half story. Uh, we believe, even though it's habitable under mass building code, 
So we're proposing to reduce our standard down to seven feet for habitability instead of seven foot three. Is that going to make much difference? Yes. I think it could. It could around. So, 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 so if they that, put that if would they, attack FAR. That, yes. That but it would. doesn't attack the massing, is what you're calling. So ma ma massing is part, part part of what we're looking at, as you know, is these big houses looming right. over yep. the little house next door. Mm -hmm. And and so that, that massing is, I mean, having that third floor, so, you know. And you raise a great point. We're also looking at the uh, height at which basements are allowed to come up. About That's another thing we're looking grade. at. We're proposing, instead of four foot six that we have right now, to reduce that to three feet. Reduce that by a foot and a half. And that would help a little bit, at least, to bring houses down. They, okay, the, the, another aspect we're looking at is kind of related to that is this curious way they have of measuring from the the original grade when they're talking about the height of the building uh, on slopey lots. Uh, and that, again, that thing on Vanna Rose is the best example, the worst example I can think of. Um, that the, the measurement should be from the lowest part of the exposed basement to the highest peak of the roof. Uh, and uh, and I, you know I can't look at a building and say, well, that's 35 feet or that's 37 feet or it's, it, you know, 25 feet. I, I don't know. I can't look vertically. But um, but but to, to, to you know to get to, to get it all in, uh, it it, uh, it would cut the looming part. And the the um, let's see, um, we're we're looking at the um, that. Um, the, the thing I mentioned, the question I raised earlier about the, the two remaining walls and the possibly non-conforming building or lot or something, um, I, we would propose uh, amending that, uh, and those are exempted from special permit. They're exempted from the large addition, so it really basically tear the whole house down, except for these two walls, and then you build this monster thing on top of it. Uh, um, and every neighborhood has sustained one of these things. I hear about in all over town, um, that we take out that exception that built on the original footprint or the original foundation or something like that. Because the original foundation, they include, you know, the, the, the patio in the back and, and the slab under the, the side garage. Um, and and, and you, you end up, a, the best example I think of recently is Clyde Terrace, like the first house on the left as you go up the hill towards Winchester. Um, that was a little, perfectly nice little house, and, and now there's a big monster house which is for sale. Um, that has grown uh, to, to, uh, you know, to yeah, mushroom. I wonder what was, what was there. that existing wall yeah. is at a low grade, right? I mean, it's at the corner, it's dipping. Mm -hmm. And they can claim that that's the average grade or that's the grade that. I don't think they have no, to they go there reduce because they're, they're, building, they're building on the original foundation. It's the average so, so they don't have to deal with the. Uh, right. No, that wouldn't work. That average, average, that's actually, that's a, that one clearly is a flat lot because yeah. it's, it's after it's after the crest of the hill. Um, the other thing uh, we're looking at is, um, oh well, the, the the garages. Now that was raised, I think, uh, Lauren, in, your, in the memo you had before the board last time. What can we do about these? the very thing you were talking about, these old things. Uh, a solution that, that we, were, we were talking about is saying that the front of the garage must be at least 10 feet behind the, the front wall of the house. Just do away with that whole tunnel under the house concept. But you're still going to have garage doors in the front. But the Just ten, at least the drawer will back. be more prominent, it'll, it'll, you're it'll saying? be back. And, and, the, the, and, and if they wanted to, to put it in a, in a trench like that, um, I and mean, we know well, why, why, why would they? Well, maybe, maybe they still would. I yeah. know, can't tell the developers. Well, if they want to put it underneath, you know, in a basement space, then yeah. in a lot of cases they But, but if that. the door were back, it, at least it wouldn't be that door staring you right in the face. It, it's quite as bad, particularly if you want to do a double one. Also, it would limit the house. But the, 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 other, the other point I should like to make um, is, is, is not so much a building point, but a, but a but a social and environmental point. These little one and a half story capes, a lot of them were built like after the war, are the nearest thing we have in town to what we call a semi-affordable single family home. 
they're pretty small, but you know, a lot of people have grown up there and raised their families there. Um, you tear them down and replace it with one of these mega things that they want a million bucks for. You talk about families coming to Arlington. They, they can't afford the million bucks if they're ordinary people. Um, I live in that hmm? uh, story and a half case. Okay, you know what I'm talking about then. It's my house. You, 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 might, you might want some more space sometime. The, the, and, and the aspect of that is, that, you know, that, that semi-affordable house, which, which would be more affordable if our zoning laws didn't allow the mega house to be built on top of it, um, because they couldn't get the land value, um, though that was built probably a long time ago of good materials, not, not, not garbage board and the soft wood you can push a nail through with your thumb, um, and all that is, is taken down, taken away, goes out of town in a truck to the dock. And, and, and uh, so that, that waste of, of those materials and that labor and the, all the stuff that went into that building is, is just thrown out. Now, that's not very sustainable. We're supposed to be a green community. We should be thinking about things like that, both on the affordability aspect and, 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 and on the just conserving the, the, the materials, the time, the labor that went into creating that building. I'd like to think about how this part of it is it's just a big block. They build it so high. Mm -hmm. Some of the things you're talking about could help that. The, the basement production potentially. What, 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 if you look at the houses that seem scaled, they're either low, like in heights, or they're shaped so that the whole thing isn't one big high block, which is what's right what these houses look like to me when I look at them. I say, Wait a minute, that whole, there's no shape to it at all. Well, when we, when we were there's driving no around looking at different line. homes, you definitely could, there was a discernible difference between the homes, in my neighborhood at least, that I know had an architect design them, and they're much more varied in terms of height and facade treatment, and the ones that weren't designed by an architect, they're a slab, contractor's cookie cutter, one, yes. one size fits all. It's like a monopoly hotel, kind of like, yeah. Okay. On, the, on the lot, you, you really can see the difference. So, yeah. I don't know how we encourage that in zoning, but it really so, makes a big difference. So you have a height limit or a number of story limit, right? That's what we right. have. Two and a half stories, right? Two and a half, stories, right two and half stories. Could you limit the size of an attic? See, because w what's happening is it's just there's no. Yeah. Sit. Well, I was thinking um, right now we have in residential R1, R0, and R2 zones. The height limit is 35 feet and two and a half stories. I've been thinking in the back of my head, instead of 35 feet, how about 30 feet and two and a half stories? Um, the, 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 one point, the, the one point you're going to hit in town meeting is, and I think we're going to run into this anyway, just to be clear, is that um, you're going to make a lot of buildings non-conforming. Yeah. And, and that's, well, of course, the grandfather. But if they want to do something different, they may have great variance. Uh, no, I, I don't. I don't disagree with that. Uh, and I, I wish I, I knew what some of the heights of these buildings were. But part of it is the way they measure the 35 feet, and that's something we'd like to get at. And, and you have to deal with the fact that half of Arlington is on a hill or some hill, and, and so you, you, you know you have to be fair to the guys building on a hill. But but you don't have to let them put his 35 feet on the highest part part of the hill. You know? Well, there was some concern in the committee and in the working group that going from 35 down to 30 might encourage, it, it might have unintended consequences. Um, so we're kind of looking at, at those. The, the, the other thing that we're, that we're looking into is we're trying to do some research on what other towns are doing to, on the, uh, to the, the deal with that, the, half, the definition of half story. Right. And then how, how, to, how to get at that, because I think that's something that we'll all have a concern about. Well, I think that half story, from what you sense with, is the half story is is important. Is, is it? Is important. Is important not to get rid of that. Not to get rid of it. No, no, we don't want to get rid of it. We we, we want to see how how, uh, how other towns are. You know, just, just maybe, they, maybe they don't have any better idea. How than they we measure do. it? Is that what you mean? The, how 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 they measure it so that you can get a traditional half story, not this thing that's a the roof. This, this gentle slope and the gamble. The roof is a half story. Yes. 
So what they're doing now, and the traditional houses, the other dormers and so on, now they're going up and they're just doing this. It's all dormers. Yes. <laughs> I think that's what you have to, because if you get rid of that, I agree with you. I, I think if you get rid of that, you start yeah. having these flat roofs everywhere, yeah. and you lose the character of the neighborhood. So could we, uh, that's what we're trying to get away Is there a way to operate on that, just to reduce the, the bulk, the just sheer bulk of it? Mm -hmm. Well, right now, the, our zoning Armors are by about three feet wide. Or yeah. the percentage of per, per percentage roof. of space <laughs> above in that yeah. half story is right. reduced. It becomes maybe like a quarter story or something. With the amount of occupiable space, yeah. so you can't just go up and right. We could definitely look at that with the director of inspectional services and, and work. Because if you're not forward. allowed to occupy it, you're not going to build it. Well, right now, a half story is a half story is defined as um, if more you it's a full, your space is a full story in our zoning bylaw. If more than half of its horizontal space is over seven foot three inches tall. So you can have an attic space if less than half of that horizontal space is seven feet three inches tall, then anything under that is it counts as a half story. If more than it more than fifty percent of it is seven foot three inches, then it's a full story. Sure. So they're 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 designing these roofs so that 49% of the horizontal space is at 7 feet 3 inches, and the rest is under. Correct. And that's how they But you can put, uh, for example, what they do is you have a, you don't need your closet to be 7 feet high. Right. A closet can be 6 feet high, right. say. Right. Yeah, but, but, but it's only a foot less than you. Yeah, that's, so right. that's right. On. The storage areas and mm -hmm. so on. Maybe yeah. in front of the bathroom. To right. Be like. Now, if we lower that standard from 7 feet 3 to 7 inches, to comply with the building code as it is now, that'll do something to help on the margin. I think that's yeah. a good thing. That's a very good, that's a very good thing. Are, are you committed with, to the building code standard for that? Yes, as a matter of fact, our standard used to, back I, I believe in the 80s, there was a change in the mass building code from 7 foot 3 to 7, uh, from 7 feet to 7 feet 3 inches for habitable space. Our zoning code adopted that change to comply. But we have to adopt that? I don't think we have to, but it, there's, it's good to be, com it makes sense to me at least to be congruent with it. But then it dropped, right? Then right, then dropped. now the mass building code has dropped again to seven feet for habitable space. So. But we're still at 7.3. We're still at 7.3. So you could build an, uh, a, a third story right now all of seven feet, and right. that would not count as... Right. So I think it's important that we we you know yeah, you make it for that. Yeah. yeah. It is a small change, but it could have been yeah. yeah. I guess I guess that's what they do. I didn't, didn't realize that how it worked. I think so. in view of the fact that it is so difficult to make small changes is not a bad thing because we can right. see what impact it really has. And we're not so you know making a radical change. Mm -hmm. Isn't that really a change is more realigning back with them? Right, I think right. That's, a, that's the approach. Which the bylaw yeah. originally was congruent with the building. It makes it easier to, uh, to yeah. adopt. Yeah. You know. John, we'd li I'd like to meet with your group. Okay. Are you meeting again soon? Um, we haven't uh, scheduled our next meeting. Work. We have some research assignments that we're working on. Okay. I guess mine is coming to this meeting, see what you guys are up to. <laughs> <laughs> so, Check. Um, I, I, it seems, seems to me we're. We have this. We have same or similar goals, uh -huh. and, and we're thinking about some similar, kind of similar tools uh, to, to to get there. So, so I, I think we're we're not across purposes. But okay. so maybe you know, ho hopefully all our all our efforts can be consolidated, and, and the redevelopment board can bring in some uh, some set of zoning bylaw amendments that every, everybody is uh, happy with and. If we go, we like the uh, master plan. A few cranks will object, and, and everyone else will vote for it. Slide through, sail through. Good. Okay, all right. Well, let's talk. Keep, okay. keep me informed of what you're doing. Oh, okay. Um, you, look, give me some email addresses. Uh, uh, you, have, you don't have my email? Oh, I, I, I will. I'm close for, I must have your email. You give him a copy. The K okay. to my I email nice is copy. I before A. <laughs> you gave us a nice cop, a list of all our board members and their addresses. Oh, I think. And that has uh, your. I've got this. If you give me another one, I'll I give this to John. Oh, okay. 
There we are. That's a, do give me another one. That's a good valuable thing. Yes, it is. That's okay. Are you We're still missing a member. Well, that's another issue. Yeah, we are missing a yes. member. That, the state appointing, we're missing. But I, I understand from, um, from uh, someone who's sometimes in touch with the, st the state that, uh, that they have a million appointments to make and that they're doing them uh, one per day. So they might get them all done by the time the term is up. Or now that's a slight, slight exaggeration, but I mean, it's never taken this long before. I, so I, I don't know what their problem is. Okay. Um, well, you have in mind would you send me your, 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 your notice. Um, um, Anyway, we, we, we haven't set our next meeting yet, if, if I didn't say that. We we're doing some, uh, we're doing some, uh, some research and some stuff and to try to get our, because I, I had a bunch of concepts and uh, we, we talked about them and so I said, no, you can't do that. Some people didn't want, didn't think we should do FAR requirement. Uh, I was, I had a, something drafted that said point three. Huh. Point three? That's a little low, I think. Well, I, in, 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 in my, in, in, in my neighborhood, um, that, that, that would not, that would not be, well, you, you live in our neighborhood, come on, you're kind of straight. <laughs> I haven't been passed with a lot, but I'm we, 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 I don't have as much lot area as you do, I think. <laughs> but no, 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 I, I, I have, I have one of the larger lots, I may have the largest lot. Well, we'll keep talking. Yeah. Okay. Good. So we'll, 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 we'll Thank you for time. coming. You, you, you folks aren't planning to do anything for this for the like, special town meeting that was mentioned uh, when we were here last. No. No. Is That's there a special? It's, it's, it, it may be a special town meeting in January. Okay. But no, we're not going to have anything ready for that. Okay. All right. Well, good. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't think we've met. Oh, Ted Fields. Oh, Ted Fields. Hi. Yes. Now it's okay. Hi. Nice to meet you. It would right. be a suit. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Being a three-piece three, three suit man myself, but well, I don't have it on tonight. But. It's good for this weather. <laughs> it is. We'll have a longer discussion. Yeah, we're next running. Month. I'd like to have a longer discussion. Okay. I will send you materials for the time next month. Hopefully things will be a little further along. Yeah. Okay. Great. So we'll we will meet that. Uh, December 7th or 6th? December 7th will be our next meeting. That'll be the last one this year. Great. And we'll talk about the design. We'll, we'll give you everything. I think yeah. that makes sense. Okay. okay. Okay, so that's the meeting right. date. So, Central School leases. Uh, Central School leases. So, um, DMH and DMR, who use together about 8,000 square feet in Central School, are not remembered. And, um, we were a little surprised by that. <laughs> um, we're having a meeting, I'm having a meeting with the town manager and um, the center school, uh, Christine Bongiorno, the head of uh, human services, to talk about whether the town needs that space for town uses or whether we should go out and look for new tenants. And it's my feeling that we're going to have to go be a little more aggressive than we have in the past because we really need to. Which level is it on? Which floor is it on? Uh, second and third. Yes. Which building? Right this next door here, Central Street. School. Okay. Twenty Academy Street. Second and third. So you go yeah. up the stairs. It's right there on that level. If you go from Academy Street, it's up one level yeah, and up. up two levels. Okay. Go. Um, yeah, it's a, it's over a hundred thousand dollars that we get a year from the two tenants. So that's a pretty Where serious problem. She wouldn't tell me. She, uh, I called them, and she said that they can't discuss it until they have a lease signed with another, um, with the landlord. In so, time. I don't, I don't have an idea. I think it's a ten or not. But they wanted more space, and we couldn't give them more space. That, that she said was the main reason. I can try to find. I can call her in a month That's or okay. so. I'm, curious. I'm curious too. The so. Central School. Planning committee has been on hold for a little while, but I'm sure that will come up at our next meeting, which I think will be at some point in early December. So Christine was working on setting that up, but Another hasn't sent out dates yet. Okay. So I think you'll be involved with okay. that now, too. Good. So I assume. Yeah. <coughs> so, but yeah, certainly replacing that money would be key. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I have other ideas that we can't talk about now. So. Yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> um, I, I just want to let everybody know that that's going to be it coming down the pike in the next few months. We're going to have to go with that. And we don't have minutes. We don't have Sorry, minutes. I don't know how um, that happened. You provided us 2016 meeting dates. Yes. Is this firm? Yep. Do we need to discuss um, this in detail? Uh, only if you ha if anybody has any problems with any of the dates. Otherwise, no. The dates are fine. No. Right. They're okay. as firm as they can be at this point. Right. You know, as the as you know, sometimes we sometimes cancel we get, a meeting. Or we get snow and have to meet on a Thursday. Right. Right. We did. I know. We know. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. okay. Good. Well, I would want to welcome Ken to the board. Yes. And have a chance to do it at the beginning of the meeting. I want to get into the hearing. Thank you. We'll get your name That's okay. Yeah. It's a little bit of orientation and things so you know what yeah. properties we can manage and all this kind of thing. You may know already. We'll give you, some, we'll give you a list. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, that would help. Again, I didn't know. I know. I, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't either. When I, what are you talking about? What yeah. Did, we managed. So what we'll do is just assign you to subcommittees and, <laughs> and just kind of figure it out on your own. But you have my email, so you'll send me a sure. one year nice next yeah. time you're meeting. I would love to join you guys to talk oh, about that issue. Yes, we will do that. And I'll give you my. Well, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. There's nothing additional. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.